Welcome to Southwest Yard and Garden. I'm John White. Today we're going to be talking about how to identify a plant. And the reason we're doing this is because we get a lot of plant samples sent into the county extension offices. People don't know what the plants are. They send them in hoping that, and sometimes agents can identify them, but sometimes we don't have enough parts, plant parts, to tell what the plant is. And sometimes uh, we're just unfamiliar with the plant. and we need to send it in somewhere, and one of the places is the uh, Range Herbarium, and Dr. Kelly Allred is a professor in the Department of Animal and Range Sciences here at New Mexico State, and Kelly unfortunately gets a lot of these calls. So Kelly, welcome to Southwest Yard and Garden. Thank you, John. Nice to be with you. Uh, Kelly, when somebody sends in a, a plant to the you know, offices and we in turn send them back to you if we can't identify them, um, what are some of the things that agents or people need to make sure they include with the sample so that you can identify it? Well, probably the most important thing is to try to include as much of the plant as possible. So if it's a small plant, something like we have here, you can just gather the entire plant and get all the, all the parts of the plant, the flowering parts. The roots and everything. Uh, the roots. Uh, and even, even old dead flower even dead material, that's can, right. Can be helpful in identification. Even the dead material can help us and we can look at old, old parts. If there are flowers available, such as we have here, then pick a little twig that has the flower on it uh, and throw that in with the sample. Uh, but try to get all the parts, uh, fruits if you have them. It's not always necessary to get the entire plant. Obviously okay. a tree, a large shrub, you can't do that. So you just pick some parts off that uh, uh, that sort of demonstrate or are representative of the different parts of the plant. Flowers, fruits, leaves, for small weeds or uh, small herbaceous plants, maybe some of the root material to show how the plant is growing. Okay. Uh, so sort of getting as much part of the plant uh, as possible. What kind of, um, I know so, like uh, say this willow tree, you have a tree that's 40 or 50 feet tall, you can't bring the whole plant in, so you pick some parts off. Uh, what kind of uh, written information does somebody need to take note of, you know, that they can include with the sample that'll help you also? Well, if, if we can get some notes that come with the plant, that's very, very helpful. So if you have something like a tree and you're going to send portion of it in with just the foliage, that's going to help us. But then we need to know, is this a tree or a shrub? Uh, is it how, evergreen or deciduous? Or? Correct. Uh, uh, what, what kinds of habitats is it growing? Is this a wild plant that I'm looking at, or is this an ornamental plant that somebody's picked out of their yard? So the locality, uh, where it comes from, is going to help me narrow down the choices when I try to guess uh, and look at just at a few leaves of what kind of plant is this. Is it a large tree? How tall, it is, how tall is it? Any characteristics about it that maybe that won't be uh, obvious from the sample itself? Uh, but especially uh, kind of where it's growing and the, and the circumstance that it's in. Is it a landscape plant or is it a wild plant out in the desert or in the mountains, something like that. Okay. Now if we uh, have a sample we want to send to you, how does it need to be prepared to well, be sent to you? Well, it's really quite easy. The, the common mistake that's made is thinking that we need to have them fresh. And we don't need them fresh, but, uh, so you don't want to put them in a plastic bag. By the time they get Put to some me, water in them, wrap them in. don't want to do that <laughs> because often they'll mold and I end up trying to identify the mold. So the easiest thing is to try to just dry the plant out, press it and let it dry uh, in some easy way. It's very easy to use something like a phone book, have some newspapers, and if you just want to open up a large book, put the newspaper in there and then put your plant sample uh, in, in the newspaper and, and close it up. Maybe pile some books on it. Yeah, and put a little it, weight on it, crush let it, it out. Right, let it sit for two, three days until it's dry, and then you can stick that. Uh, if you're going to mail it, you can just stick it in an envelope, mail it to the county agent, uh, or okay. just take it to the county agent, and he'll send it on to, on to me. Sometimes okay. you can't get the whole plant. Uh, so, or sometimes you can get the whole plant, rather. Here's a, little, here's a little weed out of the lawn, and so that's the entire plant, and so it's easy to take the whole thing and just lay it right in the newspaper, spread it out a little bit, uh, and close it up. Okay. Put the weight on. You can even stack them. You can take another one, put some newspaper. Uh, if the plant is large, then just take portions of it that's 
show all the parts and just break those off and put those in the newspaper, stick them in the phone book or any other book you want to use, put the weight on, let it dry. Uh, even the flowers, by the time they're flattened and dried, we're able to sort of reconstruct what they originally looked like from experience. And it doesn't bother us to have them dry. We actually prefer it that way. It's much easier to handle, and we don't have to deal with the mold. Okay. So it's very easy to gather the, the parts of the plant that we need, add some notes to it so, so we can sort of see what we're not able to see from the plant. We can right. see that from the note and then send that to the county agent. Okay. Now, sometimes we have people that might want to make a little inventory of their yard as far as what plants they have in their yard, and they know what the plants are, but they might want to make a little book or a little notebook to be able to maybe show relatives mm -hmm. or friends that live in other parts of the country, show them what they've got in their yard. And um, how, how would they go about if they want to make a little private collection? Well, it's very easy as far as collecting the plant. Do it in the very same way. Collect your parts, press them, dry them, uh, and then it's easy to take them out of the newspapers and just mount them on some stiff paper, perhaps. Uh, and, and if you mount it on stiff paper, you can arrange it. This is a student collection showing different grasses that they've collected, and they've added information about it. Uh, but you can handle it any way you want and just maybe stick it on a piece of paper with some glue or some tape, and then have your own little collection of your ranch plants or your cabin in the mountains, the plants around uh, from there, and it makes a nice a uh, very attractive way and to share the plants that, that are around your home, for instance. Okay. Now, a plant press is talked about a lot of botanists use them for collecting samples and stuff. What is a plant press? We plant have a press. kind of a simple one here. Right. This, is, this does all the basic things. You can get a little more sophisticated than that, and you can make yourself something like this out of maybe some hardboard or some pegboard, get some straps. We just cut some... Uh, cardboard here, the appropriate cardboard. size, and you put your plants in there and press them. This is easy to carry. I've taken this on the plane, uh, backpacking. You can carry these around very easily. Uh, okay. We use a professional size plant press. It's something like this. It does cost a little bit of money, but they're available uh, from biologic supply houses uh, to gather okay. larger specimens and deal with them that way. Okay. So this is kind of more to the standard herbarium size. Right, this would be more and... like uh, something that would go into a museum and a more of a professional scientific study type type of thing. Uh, you can almost use whatever you have around the house to construct a plant press and make a collection. Okay. Well, Kelly, I'd like to thank you very much for being on this portion of Southwest Yard and Garden and giving us some tips on sending samples in. If people are sending samples, we do want them sent to the county extension office first. So we'll contact your local extension office again, get a good enough sample with background information, so that'll help to identify it, and uh, we can help you get some of those unknown plants identified. So again, Kelly, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>